Well, hi everybody. How's everybody doing this Tuesday? I'm Dr. Missy Hood. I guess I don't get an intro today. I guess I don't need an intro actually. I'll go at it myself when we decide to post it. But how are you guys doing today? Dr. Missy Hood with the 15 minute rev. Hope everybody's doing okay. I'm trying to get a jump on the uh, yard person outside my office. I wanted to do this broadcast quickly so I could actually have you hear me and so I could actually focus because that's one of my biggest trials right now. Um, for anybody who struggles with ADD, ADHD, that's our plight. We have to focus and things like that. And so we're always having to make sure we curtail all the extracurricular sounds around us and stuff. But hope you're having a great week. I hope everybody's um, moving the way through C2 right now as God's moving you into your new. And before we get started today, I'd like to actually thank MargaretRowe.com and Smack Talk Radio. Thank you so much for your sponsorship and for every single thing that you do to help us bring the word of God to our people. Uh, we can't do what we do without you. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. And anybody that has not checked her out at MargaretRowe.com, she has exceptional craftsmanship in her jewelry. She's sold on QVC. Um, and gosh, she's everywhere. She's on Rodeo Drive and Pernovia's. Gosh, um, several different high-end shops down there. So you're going to want to go check her out, MargaretRow.com. Her newest collection is called Heaven's Presence. And again, you can check that out on MargaretRow.com. It's a phenomenal design piece that she's got. Well, several pieces, actually, not just one, but just beautiful design pieces. And um, again, again, you can check it out at MargaretRow.com. So thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, and, you know, I wanted to talk to everybody to kind of give you a background on what we do um, here at Ezekiel's Wheel in conjunction with Margaret Rowe. Um, God has teamed us up because of her background and because obviously my cousin's death. And so we actually um, teamed up to write a book, uh, which was, was called Just a Conversation Away. And that was about my cousin passing away from pancreatic cancer answer and then it led her into a transformation process because of having walked in heaven and experiencing God's presence in, in such a powerful powerful way um, God has actually used my vessel to go in and out of heaven for years uh, he's taken me in and out of heaven for over 35 years now and so teaching me about the heart of God about how to talk to people about the love the gift of love some are given the gift of faith others joy very very few are given the gift of love and so this is the new place, uh, the church. It's a, a crossroads to me that the church is standing at. They can either stay in man's ways or plastic Christianity, or they can come up into the ancient of days, the higher ways of God, which is going to cost you something. And it's going to require you to step into a trust test and go into a place you've never probably been before. And so this is a new place. But um, God has been using Margaret and myself to minister actually to the Josephs who left the church years ago. And God has been talking to me about this for the last eight years. And I really kind of thought it would just kind of look differently than it does right now. And I was really focused on the church at one point in time because I felt like, you know, that's where we need to focus on. But God always knows. And so most of us I found that are out in the world are Joseph's. And we've been listening to sermons online and some kind of going in and out of the churches where they can find authenticity and loving people. And so that's kind of hard to find these days. If you don't, I don't know about you, but that's very, very hard to connect with people in the spirit of love right now, because not too many people are really close to God right now. And a lot of people think that they are. And so because of the witchcraft being so high uh, and duping so many people, and matter of fact, I'm going to get into that here in a second too, because it's very, very high on this broadcast right now. Um, because they hate us talking about the truth. And so we're going to keep it, we're going to keep it coming, love. Yeah, there you go. Okay. So anyway, God's got us talking about the truth right now in this hour because there's so little truth. It's hard to find the truth with people. Everybody thinks they're okay. Everybody thinks I'm okay. You're okay. Let's all be like everybody else, you know, fit in the same mold kind of a mentality. That's the world's mentality, by the way. They have this one size fits all mold. Hey, we don't want to offend anybody. And, you know, it's funny because when truth walks in the room, guess whose hair's blasted back because you're not prepared for him. You haven't been getting free from you, from the things that so easily beset you to keep him from coming near you. And hence you have no firepower. And, and, and the times like we're walking into are now starting to eat a lot of your lunches. They're eating your lunch. And especially the level of witchcraft we're dealing with right here, right now in the C2. 
And I knew this was going to happen, by the way. I've been watching this, and I've been wondering what this was going to look like uh, when we stepped into it. And here we are walking it out. We're walking it out. And the witchcraft is like nothing we've ever seen before. And it's all, uh, they're preying, P-R-E-Y, on your emotions in this hour. <clears throat> what is that? Those are unhealed areas that you haven't gotten delivered from. Those are demons that live in your bloodline or inside your vessel that you refuse to deal with. So guess what? Guess who's being manipulated by witchcraft right now? It's most of the church because they're operating and they're going on feelings instead of faith. But they would argue with me and say, oh, no, 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 Dr. Missy. What do you know? Well, I can see by the actions of a lot of you in, in the prayers that you pray, the seeds that you sow, you're praying witchcraft prayers because it's not the truth and what God would be telling me. And it's so contrary to the way that love should be. And so your actions speak volumes, volumes for your disobedience. So anyhow, we're called uh, to minister to this group of Josephs, not the church. Although that does happen from time to time because three-fourths of the church are now misaligned. And so now, <clears throat> this has been on my spirit for three days. And I just shake my head, man. But I see a lot of people going back to Egypt. They don't know what to do now. So they're just like, okay, we'll go back to the old by and by. We'll go back and, pardon me, my message is, and we'll go back and do what we thought well, one, at one time we were aligned. It's not going to get you there. You understand that? Going backwards does not get you there. God only goes forward. He doesn't ever go backwards. So your own fears are then the thing that are standing in your way. Fears of being led astray. When this is a trust test that God has called you to. He's called you into a trust test. And that's the people group that God is using this hour. People that they don't know where God is taking them. But they know that he's never let them down. He's never lied to them. And so hence. Here we are, and we've, we're part of the people group that are coming on through in this new groove. And so God is teaching us our new move is what I'm going to say, in this new move of God. And so we're, we're having to learn about listening to the king and about, about obeying everything that he tells us to do. That's the new place we've stepped into. And it's strict obedience, by the way. This is a place of strict obedience. And in past seasons where I've seen leaders do their own thing, thinking, oh, it won't matter. God's got greasy grace for me. No, it's costing a lot of you today, <clears throat> unfortunately. But so the mentality seems to be with the church that has gotten caught up in dismay, they are in this, oh, well, I might as well join all the backwards people too instead of trusting God and going forward into the new. They're, they're following the sheeple. They're sheeple is what they are. They're just going along. Just wherever this road leads me, that'll do. Absolutely amazes me. But that's their plight, not mine. And so I've dropped them like a rock and I'm allowing God to take me into the divine. And if you can't help people, that's, that's what I've really had to, you know, I've had to make myself accept this. You cannot make people, uh, you can't help people that think that they know more than God. You can't, you have to let them learn the hard way because they're rockheads. And I hate to be so rude as to say that I'm not trying to antagonize you, but it's, it's having hard headedness. That's what that is. That's what we call rockheads. So I say, let them figure out, figure it out, figure it out on your own when it's too late. And so, and then it'll be too late. But again, that's between them and God. So, I mean, I, I what I find, and I'm not trying to be insulting, so please forgive me. But what I find is that there are so many people that want to stay where it's familiar. Because that's always been their safe place before. And it's a bubble reality. But it's also, it makes them a prime target for the enemy. And they think that they're in a safe place where now they're getting overtaken by witchcraft. And they're thinking, why is the warfare escalated to this thing? Why, why is it at this level? What are we dealing with? Well, because you didn't get cleaned up from you. And I've only been saying this a million times, a million times. So as a prophetess, what I see is an entire people group that have gotten caught up in demonic realities, witchcraft. Because most of them pray this way now by using the word of God unlawfully against those they deem as less than their moral superiority when it's them that have fallen into the enemy's kingdom. They've fallen out of trust. They've fallen out of truth. But they use the truth. 
They use God. It's a spirit of usury, by the way. Let's just call it what it is. It's a spirit of usury. You only run to God when you get your butt in a sling. And you're thinking, oh, my God, where, where's the king? Oh, no. And he's like, I've been here the whole time. I've been over here saying, hey, hey, this is the way. It's over here. Oh. It's over here. Walking in it. So they've fallen back in trust. They've fallen back in truth. And now they're beginning to put on an old wineskin, thinking that this is what will bring them in. But it has no power. The old thing has no power that you've stepped within. So we're living in a God in a time of God's power, not his wrath. And here some of you go stepping into a place of powerlessness. That makes no no sense to me. If 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 God is a forward moving God and he's always going forward, he never goes backwards. What makes you think he's going to change directions for your lack of trusting him? That that just baffles me. So so it leaves me wondering <clears throat> what it's going to take in order for these people to take a spiritual bath or come up into maturity where God is always wanting them to be. Because the church can't have its own way. You can't have your cake and eat it too. You can't serve two masters, nor can you walk with one foot in God's kingdom and one foot out afraid that, well, if I'm wrong, then at least I'll be halfway in and maybe he'll have grace enough for me to come on through. God's like, no, it's all or nothing. God, I don't know about you. Let's just talk about this realistically. If you were in a relationship with somebody and you were getting serious with them and they were kind of like one foot in, one foot out, you know, I just kind of want to date around. I'm not sure if I want to commit. I don't know. I just got commitment issues. I don't know. There's so much. There's just so many choices out there. I don't know if it's you. Uh, would you want to open your heart to those types of imbeciles? I mean, how insulting. Really, somebody that would make you feel like you were second choice. Oh, if I got something, and, and I'll just choose you with some, in case something better comes along. I just want to make sure I've got all my options covered, you know. How stupid and how selfish are you? Let me stress the selfishness, the selfish spirit on you, the usury spirit on you. Oh, well, you, I just want to take care of me. So if no one else comes along, then I've got you. At least I've got you. And God's saying this to you. He's saying, no, thanks, baby. Don't let the door hit you with the good Lord split you. Because I see what's in you. And I don't want to come near you. I don't want a two-faced heart. I don't want to have somebody who's halfway in and halfway out and half committed. <clears throat> and so the Lord's saying, you, you can't go back to Egypt and then think God's going to bless you by allowing you to come on into the new. It's all or nothing. It's all into trusting the Lord it with your life, with where he's trying to take you, or you're you're on your own. You're on your own. And then you're left out there in the fight, left to defend yourself with all your might, which isn't anything in this hour. Because the new place is a trust test and only takes place when you step out not knowing where God's going to take you. That's the first step. So, where are we at currently? That's covered a lot. To me, that's covered a lot of ground. Um, if you feel like you've been walking through water, like mentally, mentally, like you feel like you're, there have been waves of just garbage, or even especially spiritually, that's water witchcraft overtaking you, which is another indicator that most of you do not know how to war your way through this crap, which... But what it does feel like is that you're walking through water and your mind, wills, and emotions because of spells, laws, and magic. And if you're not going to get deliverance, I can't help you. I don't even know why some of you listen to the broadcast. I don't. You might as well go back to listening. I, I, I'm just seriously going to say this to you. Please don't watch me. Just go go listen to Joe Blow. Go listen to someone in a white skin. I can point their names out to you. So then that way, at least you're all commiserating and you're miserable together. And, and then maybe you won't feel so alone when the tank, when the sink 
the ship goes down. But don't don't come over here. Just don't. You, it's a waste of your time. I can't help you if you don't take the walk this part seriously. I can't. And, and it's insulting to the Lord when you have one foot in and one foot out, thinking, "Oh, he's." I'm just gonna see what she's talking about. God doesn't care. You're not really. He's not releasing anything to you when you do come over here because of your double-minded two-faced mentality in your heart he, you're not getting anything anointing. he doesn't do that he's all or nothing in the sour so the revelation is not being able to be imparted to you because you've got one foot in and one foot out your heart is double-minded you're a double-minded man or woman unstable in all your ways and then you sit out there wondering well where's the ancient of days why are things not going well for me well, because maybe he's been calling you up for a long time now and you've got your head stuck in the ground like a, a goofy ostrich thinking, well, if I can't see it, it won't touch me. <laughs> Sheep could be so freaking stupid. Just stupid. No wonder they need the shepherd with a hook to get back over here. Get back over here. And then they still follow the masses even when they're wrong. Because people need to be accepted. It's like, you know, and I guess there's a blessing for being, uh, marching to the beat of your own drum. I've never minded walking alone. Not ever. I, I like my aloneness. I like my alone time with the Lord. Matter of fact, I'm really kind of selfish about it. And, and I really don't like people coming in with their crap. In my atmosphere and disrupting my peace. Now, as a deliverance minister, that's a completely different animal because I realize there's a time for that. Ecclesiastes 3.1, there's a time for everything under the sun. And so, I mean, I keep that within the confines of ministry hours and then I turn it off. But I like when I'm off and I'm with the Lord by myself. That's just me and him. And baby, no one's coming in to that time and space unless you know him, unless you know him, unless you're his friend. And then we can talk about him. We can... We can talk about what he's been doing in your life and in my life, and we can sharpen each other like knives because that's what love does. True love does. But see, it's hard to find that in the sour because so many people have stayed surfacey. They've stayed on the slower, the lower levels of the mountain. It's they're not high. I put my hand up here for the camera, but you're really very, very low on the mountain. But yet you act like, and that's what that's what low living people do. They 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 try to uh, usurp true authority, and they try to usurp the Lord's power on the ones who are serving Him, and they know He's with them, like many of you know He's here, and yet you have the audacity to come near, and you're thinking, "Well, I'll just nose. I'm just going to be nosy with my voyeur spirit and and my narcissistic spirit, and I'm going to Jezebel. That's what you are too, some of you, and 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 you come in. And I'm not, you know, I'm just calling you what it is because that's what you need deliverance from. So I'm just helping you, and and so. Pointing things out, write this stuff down, by the way. It'll help you. You can go to deliverance ministry. You can save yourself time. But um, take the mindsets too. The double-mindedness. Everything. Take it all. <clears throat> but this is the current state of the church right now and what it's been going through. And if you're not going to get deliverance, I can't help you. So no, no point in me belaboring this. But let's get into the message. 1 Samuel 29, 1 through 31, 13. And, and a lot of people think I'm arrogant. I'm not arrogant, by the way. I'm Scorpio. Scorpio is very confident. And when I know I'm right in what the Lord has told me, I can sit here and tell you all day and night. I can tell you this is what the Lord said. And you'll be, you. M many of you are such rockheads. You will argue with me until the cows come home. I don't argue with demons. I don't. I'm just going to tell you <clears throat> what he's telling me. And you can choose to do what you do. But God called us to know the signs and the times. No. Your God, know yourself. You're a sign and wonder. Go read your Bible. So the zodiac is the devil's heart. So you got to know who you are. You got to know your position in time. You got to know what your sign does in order for you to align. And then you got to know your tribe. Okay, that's all I'm gonna tell you about that. You go get the series, Deadly Charge. Tells you about all that. I'm not putting that out here because I don't put it in the hands of foolish people. Ezekiel-Wheel.org. You can go buy it. For a great price, it cost me something to teach it. So knock yourself out. I love you, but that's what we're doing. So anyway, feeling out of place? You feeling out of place? Are you in a very difficult testing season? That's what this kind of feels like right now. And I actually, you know, it was interesting because today I uh, 
felt like this is the strangest fire for C2 I have ever freaking walked through. Really? I'm like, really? But the Lord's been telling me like for a week and a half, he said, Missy, your emotions are a very, very powerful thing. I'm like, how is this? <clears throat> what does he mean by that? And because this, the strange fire in this season feels very, very strange, very strange. And how the enemy has crafted spells, laws, and magic to cause the body to turn around and go back to Egypt or go do things that seem right at the time, but are causing them to get misaligned. And this is the enemy's attempt to hinder your climb. What is this that you're walking through? It's the test of Saul. Not to the Lord last, this is the fourth rev that God's been talking to me about this thing. And so you need to go read about King Saul and what caused him to get disqualified in time. He lost his whole kingdom. But it's it's a time where God is showing all people how strong their emotions can be when God has given us each a mandate through his authority. Sorry. <clears throat> which helps us to navigate through time. And we all know how strong the devil is. So what he does, again, he prays, P-R-E-Y, on your emotions. And those are demons. Emotions can be, if they're negative, can be demons. And so Jezebel and witchcraft come in, and they team up with these demons in you and in your bloodline, and they keep you from coming through. And they talk you out of things. Because they know what you're going to do. They know your patterns. They observe you. So if you don't know which demon is assigned to your sign, you might want to do some research. Because those demons are being used to cause you to become misaligned. It's witchcraft. Which is why you need our deadly charge series, Ezekiel's dash wheel.org. And this is what happens when the enemy causes us to get out of place. But God, in his mercy, will still take care of us to a certain point. This is what happened to King David, actually, before he became king. He was being tested by the Lord through all the suffering. He was being chased by Saul for 10 years, as a matter of fact. And David, in this situation, had actually sinned against God by pursuing what he thought was a way in. He was tired of the fight. And God, and yes, your thinking can let witchcraft. When you think you know more than him. So in this hour, what God is saying this means is that some David or Davidic leaders, some of you who were always aligned now, you're getting misaligned in time. These are leaders who have been following God correctly at one point <clears throat> and your high level leaders, your high speakers, but you've sinned against God because now you begin to turn back and go to Egypt because you haven't gotten cleaned up. It's it's an automatic. You automatically digress when you refuse to pro progress in the way that God meant for you to come forward in. Again, deliverance is the key. And I'm not just talking about a little dabble, do you? I'm talking about every time you meet. So because they hadn't gotten cleaned up, they didn't know what else to do, and they think they're okay. And so many are thinking, well... I feel rightly aligned, <clears throat> but if you haven't been getting constant deliverance, like every time you meet with your sheep, where all of you can go through, then your climb will become steep. And the Lord says, you'll lose momentum and the ability to keep climbing and moving through because you, many of you are caught up in what you once knew. It's in a wineskin. You're going back to, you're being led back to an old wineskin on purpose by witchcraft, by witchcraft, <clears throat> which tells me, pardon me, it tells me the witchcraft is catching up with you. And see, I, I get it. I can sit here and tell you this all day long, but a lot of people hate Scorpios because we're double truth, but you have to know the clock. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. Every sign is at a position in time. And each sign has characteristics that help you move through into your new. And you have to move through them as well as the tribes. And if you get to my sign, I'm double truth. There are three other ones like me. We, all, we house double truth. That's going to be Aquarius. It's going to be Issachar Taurus. It's going to be 
Simeon, Leo. It's going to be Manasseh, Scorpio. Aquarius is Asher. But each one of us has a double. And so we're here to help you do specific things if you hit, hit us at a, a specific place in time. Scorpio, we're here to either help you transform or to be judged. And then if you hit Benjamin or Sagittarius, they're there to help shoot you forth or shoot you down. I Meaning you're not going forth in time if you haven't done things to cross and help you to become aligned. I don't know any other way to say this, any other ways from Sunday. I am so frustrated right now with some of you. And, and you think, oh, I don't know what you're doing in preaching because you're so mean to us as sheepies. You're mean. They don't ever speak to us like this in my church. <laughs> it's probably why you're stuck where you're at. Because some people need a good swift kick to get their butt in gear and get their butts up and going. That's what my dad used to tell me. And my dad was not an unloving person. He loved deeply. He was of the tribe of Benjamin. He was a man of excellence. He was a straight shooter. And he was extremely, his sword was very sharp, but he loved, loved, loved very deeply. And that's the thing about when you get up into these high spiritual signs in the fourth quadrant of God's heart, if God's got you here and we're the ones speaking to you, trying to draw you near, you do you really think God's going to be nice to you? He's trying to realign you quickly. He's weed whacking you quickly. Weed whacking. And I love sitting underneath weed whackers. I'll just go stand there. So go ahead. Go ahead. And sometimes, oh, God, that hurt. Oh, yeah. Okay. And then I'll go back and talk to the Lord. Sometimes it's a little bit deeper than normal. So I really have to go seek about some things. But you know what? I know in the end, he's pruning me back so I can fly forward fast. And I know that if he puts a lot of people around me like that, he's taking me somewhere very, very fast. And those actually... I learned the strategy. Those are the people I surround myself with purposely now. So I can move very, 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 very quickly. Think about that. <clears throat> Just saying. So, okay. For those of you who choose not to do that, the witchcraft is catching up with you. And some of you are being overtaken by it because your refusal to do what God has been telling you to do. So it's catching up with you and you're getting ticked off at people like me coming on here telling you. Oh, who does she think she is? Uh, I don't really care at this point what you think. Don't care. So witchcraft is overtaking your abilities to think correctly. And most of you feel like you're in a crap storm because many of you thought you could do this on your own, which is what has caused you to get left behind and now possibly misaligned. I've said this a million ways to Sunday. This is the test that Saul went through, by the way. I haven't gotten off track. He went through where he relied on his own thinking <clears throat> which is a sin of witchcraft because man's ways are not god's ways so you're going to need to get deliverance from a heart condition that houses hypocrisy lying deception witchcraft disobedience acting out of character spirit of independence pride these are all part of maybe what's gotten you caught up on the outside so you you are inside actually so you, it may be a little bit more than that if you've got a few more things in your bloodline get it all off you we're taking things off daily and then through cursing. So they're all actually cursings that could possibly be operating in your bloodline. But get it off you personally. So especially if you're a leader. Because what happens if the head trickles down like the oil on the beard of Aaron? Be willing to deal with you. And quit thinking you know the way through. Nobody's been this way before. Nobody's been this way. The only way I know is that I'm an armor bearer to the king. I serve at the pleasure of the king. I'm talking to you from the inside out. I know the way back home. Because I operate there all the time. I have all my life. I don't know any other way to tell you this. And I see the people, they're struggling and they're having a hard time. And I, I get hit with it too, but I recognize what the enemy's trying to do. And God's just saying, do this, do that, do this, do that. Because how else would I know if I didn't have the gift of love who's telling me all these things? This is the way you should go. He's talking to me from the inside out, just like I'm talking to you. So this is what... Destroyed King Saul's kingdom and destroyed him too. And, 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 and God's saying, do not entertain anything that tells you to step away from the true king. But do not allow anything that the enemy is saying to you at all that would cause you to get into disobedience too. Obey the Lord instantly, says the Lord. This is an hour where you need to obey God instantly over anything he tells you. Quit second-guessing what he's told you to do. Quit overanalyzing and apply some self-discipline as this trade is going to be the one thing that's going to bring you through. But it's also the one thing the enemy's coming at in you for those of you who've always been disciplined like this. 
And the reason, guys, do you not realize we're in the fight of our lives right now? Why do you think the strange fire is so hard? Why do you think they're coming at us with such cunning witchcraft? Why do you think? Did you really think the devil was going to let you just take your land back? Hmm. So the enemy has mixed it up a little bit to overtake you. And God is saying, nope, baby. If you don't bring truth, you don't get to come in. So because the unredeemed have chosen to stay the same, and hence God's not allowing them to come inside to dwell with him or stuff with him because he's demanding us to do it his way this time. You have to trust him. But in your process of trying to come in, the Lord says, don't fraternize with any enemy. Don't just allow him to stay. Don't allow these things to stay in your bloodline. Thinking, oh, well, if I have time, I'll get around to it. We'll see you later. Have a nice life if you make it. Hate to be this way, but this is where we're at today. God, I'm rhyming left and right. Lord, you're rhyming left and right. Um, he does that when he's in the room. But the Lord is saying, don't fraternize with the enemy because it can cost you everything. And we saw this with David and Jonathan when they almost got killed by King Saul. Instead of saying in a spirit of true honor and true integrity, what gives that to a person? What makes you operate in that thing? Getting free. Getting free brings more of the presence of God into me. It brings in true intimacy. Less of me, more of him. Who do you think has those qualities? It's not me. Your flesh is limited. So you're inviting in more of the power of God, more of everything that he has in store, even your destiny, because he houses kingdom within us. It's him that is the kingdom. He is the way, the truth, and the life. Everything about Jesus, is the, he is the essence of kingdom. So what the enemy is actually trying to do to all of you is to woo you away from God's spirit or truth to cause you to fall into the spirit of deception, just like he caused Saul. All to do and many of the angels too the devil's cunning that's how a third of them fell and he always promises all these grandiose false realities oh we'll be like god he told adam and eve this too oh we'll be like god you'll know as much as god or but he'll he'll try to hit you in your place of need if you want to grow your ministry well if you go and do this in your own he won't say it's your own way he'll just make you think it's yahweh because he's so cunning like that and if you don't know how, how to hear the true king's decree and getting free from yourself so you can actually see the truth about a thing instead of the lower levels that you're operating at, <clears throat> then what happens is guess who's going to get duped in that and you're going to settle for the ishmael that the enemy's trying to show you or make you believe is of god and it's not him it's you so your disobedience can cause problems, not just for you. It can affect innocent people too, especially if you're a leader. Which brings us to John 11, 55 through 12, 19, where it talks about only days to live. Only days to live. How many of you know that we released a spirit of judgment over about two revs back, two revs back, I think. But this isn't about that. This is about, it could be if it's you. But what would you do if you only had six days to live? Because this is what Jesus was faced with. And it's where God has forewarned some of you with what was to come. Just like he did his son, Jesus. But instead of Jesus focusing on that, he decided to go and be around dear friends and fellowship with them. And so he surrounded himself by people who brought him joy to his heart. And <clears throat> because he already knew the end, he already knew the end. He knew where God was taking him. He knew where God, what God was going to use the circumstance for. And he didn't, he didn't argue with God about it. He went through this door. And so many of you front runners in the sour who have been called by God, you're starting to, Doubt the power and God is like, uh-uh, baby, you keep walking your walk. You keep bringing this thing on forward. You keep coming forward. Backwards is not an option. 
And even though it doesn't look like it's taking you anywhere, the Lord says, you can bet your butt. My power is fully aware and I am aware of what lies ahead of you. And I've seen the end from the beginning. That's why I told you. I told you through prophets. I told you through the word. I've told you long before you stepped in this process. And your prayers are the only ones I've heard. Not the unredeemed. Not those praying against you. That's John 9, 31. He doesn't hear the prayers of sinners. Woohoo! Okay, we're getting ahead of ourselves. So Jesus knew he was entering a place. Place where he was going to be used as a great space for the entire church to enter in because of the many things he knew his death would do for them. It was fixing to bring explosive power. His death on the cross would become a prototype for many people in our hour to step into the power of God instead of getting caught up in the wrath of God. Do you understand? If it's not the time of the end times, and I don't believe it is, I believe it's a testing ground actually, for the enemy to see how much he can get away with. But, and I know it looks like it's late. Everybody's like, oh, but Dr. Missy, you don't, you're not looking at the signs. Oh, yes, I am. But you don't know what God has shown me. <laughs> and it doesn't matter, I guess, um, unless you know that I have full confidence in the king. And I know exactly how he's going to do this thing. <clears throat> and it is through the power of God. It's through the power, not the wrath. It's not the end times. Jesus is not coming back yet, but he's coming back in you. He's coming back in you. That, that Those are the bride that have chosen to be redeemed. The ones with power that are coming on through. He's coming back in you. He's coming back in you, baby. And he's coming back with might and power. And he's not afraid of anything any enemy has to say. Because that's how redemption happened in that hour. He said it was in a blinking of an eye. It was in the blinking of an eye. That's why Jesus got up on the cross. That's why he got up on the cross. He knew what awaited him. And he was up there for the lost. He was like, okay. Because he had such love for them. And see, obviously, you know I'm not him. <laughs> I sometimes wonder why he chose me to do this thing because I am so. <sighs> I just thought he would choose somebody, probably a better representative, you know, sometimes. But, you know, he does things in the most uncanny ways. And, and you know, who am I to discount why he chose me? He, he chose me in a place that I thought I should be and I know where I'm supposed to be now. But I, I just, you know, out of my love for him, I get so frustrated for him. And I'm like, Lord, I go talk to him. And I'm like, Why? Are you wasting your time on these people? And you think you're just a me prophet. You're a main prophet. No, I'm double truth. But obviously he's seeing something in you that I don't see yet. And so forgive me if I've offended you. But good thing he's God and I'm not. Because it's double truth. There'll be a lot of lightning striking around me. Boom, 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 boom. But I can't say anything for what the king says. So there you go. But in this place that Jesus went to, we're not off topic. This is a place of exposure. This is the place we've entered into too, as front runners. And God is about to expose who is who. So he's been separating out the two, the two streams, the fake church, those operating God's reality, the bride of Christ. And then this was also the place that Judas was exposed in front of Jesus. And he let everybody know, hey, he's not mine. <laughs> he's not mine. Hey, hey, hey. And, and this is the place right before resurrection power takes place. Ooh. Are the places you go filled with Christ's fragrance? <clears throat> you know, I know that we all have different places that we serve and people that we associate with, but do they really know the king? And it's hard. Do they know, or, the, or do you all just stay in the superficial part? So you see one, two, three, and four, and the higher you move through these doors every year, you've got to know how to move through them monthly. You got to know there's, there's so much multi-layered learning in that. And this is what trips up the church. This is why you got to get that deadly charge series. It teaches you about all that. But that's another conversation. But do you, do you, do the people that you associate with 
above the authentic you? Or, or did they just <clears throat> keep you in this fake Christian bubble reality too? And I know I harp on that a lot. I do. I do. And, and this is why people have a hard time receiving God in me because I refuse to be fake. I will not be disingenuous. If I'm having a bad day, I'm going to get on here and I'm going to tell you I've had a crappy, crappy, blankety, blank, blank, blank day, maybe. And then I'll repent. But why do I have to be fake? Because God doesn't make me feel that way. It's man that has the problem. See, my friends, all my friends are very loyal, loving, godly people, but they're authentic. They're authentic. And I'm not going to say that one size fits all. You got to fit into my mold in order for me to love you. I'm like, who are you? Are you a moron? Are you an alien? Because this is why people hate Christianity too. They hate the confinement. It's why I've always hated it. And so I realized it wasn't me. It was you, some of you. And I thought, that's your bubble reality. You go live there if you want. I choose. I was born free and I choose to live free. I will always remain free. But I like people who know the heart of the king and they worship him only, the truthfulness of him. And they're not willing to compromise on that. And don't get me wrong. I'm not looking to sit here and say, oh, you need to go act like this, or act like me. No, no, no. You be you. You be you. But I'm saying to thine own self, be true. Worship God where you're at. Be real for Christ's sake. I mean, he, it's not like he didn't know. And I don't know why a lot of you put on these fake masks when you walk into the church and take them out the second you leave. And then you go flip the person off in the park or whatever you do. I don't think half the, maybe, maybe. But it's like, come on. It's such a farce. And a lot of you think, oh, you have a terrible attitude towards church. She's got a church. No, I'm saying what he's telling me to say. Because this is the truth today. You have to admit this, leader. You have to admit it. It's a load of you know what -y. And so th this is what determines. You become who you hang around. So if you're not careful and surrounding yourself with other true believers, you become a hypocrite. And so the Lord is saying to you, are you solid in your ability to take part in your con love connection with me? Are you solid in that? Are you comfortable with where you are in the spirit, with the things that I still need to heal you from? Are you okay with that? Are you surrounded with people who love you at this level? That's what I'm trying to say. And they love you. They'll love the devil right out of you. And, and they understand your need to be true, to thine own self be true, because that's what the disciples did. That's what disciples still do. Modern day disciples. Or do you get easily caught up in your own redirection because of unhealed places within yourself that make you feel like you have to operate in perfection? Oh, no, I can't let God see that side of me. He may not love me. How goofy are you? Are you goofy? He's everywhere. He's in your heart. All right, really, are you? I'm not going to ask you if you're stuck on stupid. That's a just to do plan to say. Are you goofy? Really? What makes us think we're going to hide from him? He says you can run, but you cannot hide. You cannot hide any part of yourself from the king. So you might as well just get honest with him about a few things and get it off of you. Get deliverance too. Wouldn't that be a novel idea? Because Jesus knew he was called to do a certain thing in order that many might see the king. Bottom line, this is the question God has for you in this hour. How well do you stay on task? Are you easily redirected like a fish with a lure? ADHD mind. <laughs> I don't know. But this is the joyful place Jesus stood in before he entered his suffering. It was actually a place of Passover <clears throat> where this is, this is just, phew. he actually was standing in front of his people as king. Did you know that? Jesus was standing in front of the people at that moment. And he, the king was, they were asking for a king. They had been asking for a king. Remember that? 
So God sent the Lord Jesus Christ, rode it on a donkey, and he was literally standing before them as king. Like he is many of you in the sour with his power. The king is in the room, and many of you are about to miss your place of visitation because you won't get rid of you. But these people didn't know it. But they would in the end. You want to know why? Because people are fickle. And it matters to them the minds of men. That's what matters to them. What people think about them. Despite what they had seen this king do. Despite what many of you are watching in your warfare too. With the king that is on this ministry. He knows he's here. And he's trying to draw you near. I'm not trying to rhyme. It just happens like that. He's here. I thank you, Father God. But, you know, despite what these people had seen in Jesus, despite the miracle working power, they didn't stay with him. They were so freaking fickle. They were users. They were just entertainment driven, which is so true of what many do to him today. Oh, God, I just I want to come into church and I want to treat it like I do when I go to a movie. I want to be entertained. God's like, I'm not here to entertain you. What house did you think you stepped into? Move along. Move along. If that's the dishonorable heart condition you brought in, that's the song you're singing, move along. Don't let the door hit you where I split you, says the Lord. Get on. He's not being nice anymore. Get on. Just like he told the money changers when they were Temple of Thieves. So they were in there and he starts cracking his night his cat of nine tails on some of their backs. They have hooks in that. They have hooks in those nine tails. So I'm sure he got a few chunks out of them, <clears throat> a few pounds of flesh. It's nothing more than the enemy did to him. But he's like, get out of my house. Get on. Get out of my house with your fake brand of Christianity. Get out with your fake brand of love. That's not me. That's not my heart. Get out. Get on. Do what you do, but get on. Just like you told Judas too. Get on. Get on, buddy. Climb that tree. Get on. I know what you're going to do. Oh, my glasses are screwed up right now. Sorry. That's what he told him. He said, climb that tree, buddy. I know where you're heading. I know you've betrayed me. Get on. I should have named this thing get on. But it's because Jesus knew that many sheep move with the masses. Because they're afraid of what the truth might cost them. And that will determine an unholy heart condition. So before Jesus showed up, the people were so two-faced. And they were asking. And they knew, by the way, he was showing up in the place of Passover. And he was fixing to show them literally what he was a prototype. Remember, he climbed up on the cross. This was a prototype of how to attain resurrection power. and he was about to show them the true meaning of Passover. I'm fixing to pass over the spirit of death, and I'm fixing to rise up and show you how to do that too. But these people were so man-focused that they said, will he show up for the Passover? Oh boy, will he? <laughs> He's fixing to show up and show out. Because their Passover was man-made. It was their version of who they thought he was and what he thought would, what they thought would get them on their way. And, and the Lord said, no, um, these people, but they proved him right. They proved him right because they were so caught up in the fight, like some of you are today in, in warfare, and you're not paying attention to where the enemy's actually hitting you. But they were what they were really caught up in, what you're really unaware of is that you're really caught up in man's approval and you need to be right. And, and they completely missed their visitation. Do you understand, leader? Do you understand that in your face right here, right now, the Lord has given you a command. If you will say, Lord, show me how to do this thing. I don't know what she's talking about. He's going to take you on a fast track and out of your suffering. And then he's going to give you some directives. And you're going to have to separate yourself and let God shake your tree. You're going to have to get some dead fruit away from you, which means people are going to have to go away from you. You can't go and have the presence of the king with people who aren't willing to enter in. How can two or more pray together unless they first agree? 
So you're going to come be coming out of one stream and into the truth stream. And you've got to stand with the king, no matter what it costs you. Which brings us to Psalms 118, 1 through 18. And it's talking about songs sung at Passover. When people make room for the king. And it's talking about being hemmed in no more. When God has brought you through your new door. And it was actually, this is a song that Jesus sung at Passover. Because he was happy. He knew what was to come. Has the Lord told you your end from your beginning? Has he been having you pray a thing through? Have you been standing on a promise? Where he promised you something and, and he said, this is what I'm going to do. And you've been having to stand and stand and stand and stand. And you're like, God? And he's been challenging every part of your being. And you've been thinking, am I even hearing from him? Is this ever going to come into pass? Yes, delay does not mean denial. But this passage actually was from a messianic psalm where Jesus was thanking God, giving praise for helping him out of a very difficult situation. How many people feel like you've been fighting the devil these days, fighting major things that seem uncanny? I mean, like, wow, really, God? And so this Passover song was the one Jesus sang because he knew something that people around him didn't know. And Jesus knew that everything was coming to a climax around himself. Don't you feel like things are coming to a climax right now? And there was only one way out, one way out, which is through resurrection power. Front runner, it's time for you to get into position in this hour, okay? Time to be springboarded. And even though you can't see the way forward, the Lord said, I do. I do. I made your promise at the beginning and I'm fixing to bring you all the way through. So the name of the Lord and the hand of the Lord can you give you great victory when the time arrives and you're hemmed in on all sides. And God will make a way to bring you into a broad place for having listened to the king. When everybody's saying, oh, they're fixing to be made a disgrace. And God said, really, baby? Baby, please. No. Baby, they listened to me. Did you? No. But God will open the gates and give you a new way through because we can do all things through Christ, even attain deliverance when needed because he was the sacrifice. And just like the Israelites did at the Red Sea, God helped them cross over. And he dealt with Pharaoh afterwards. He drowned him. He's fixing to drown your enemies. So the Lord's saying there will always be people or men who think that they're king. But God will always circumvent them to prove who is God and who is not. Because man didn't save man, says the Lord. It was Jesus who chose to get up on that cross. And so that man might be exonerated from his sin. So this pharisaical mindset is just man acting in the same spirit of Satan before he fell, along with the spirit of Jezebel, when God struck the enemy and one third of the demons out of heaven and sent them into hell. Wow. So I, I cannot, I'm so sorry. I'm not going to apologize that God is rhyming because he's here. He doesn't, this has never happened like it's happening now. So I, I hope that didn't irritate you, but if it does get over it, it's what he does. I love him. I'm glad that he's here. So God saying, I'm refusing to share my throne with anyone this hour because pig headed people being determined to prove to me that they're going to commit treason and do anything that they want to do and be. When I've called them into a certain positioning and then they give excuses for stepping outside of a truth filled spirit, which could have easily guided them into safety if they would have, that they would just hear it. But nope. Sometimes man is too headstrong, which gets him and his destiny into a place where he wasn't meant to be. But for those who listen to kingdom, 
They're fixing to see me, says the Lord, because I'm a God that doesn't lose. I'm a God who finishes when I tell you I'm going to do. But it's man in his ways that caused his own downfall for listening to the wrong spirit like Adam and Eve. Or Saul, says the Lord, when they refused to hear it, God's truth. Hence, Jesus' resurrection power could have reconfigured everything in that hour, but he did back then for that people group. Now he's going to do it again for re true redemption and revival to come in for men, for people who maybe didn't mean to get caught up in that sin. All of which comes by listening to the only one, the only true and living God and obeying his commands so that the words you pray will stand because God, does not listen to the prayers of men and women who pray in sin. He only listens to those who obey him. John 9, 31. We know, this is what it says. <clears throat> Clear my voice. We know that God does not listen to sinners or unredeemed people or people using the word of God in a sinful way or redeemed people being used by unredeemed people to do the sin that they themselves know that they want they try to use against those that they deem a threat to them. See, you all get judged for doing these things. Do you understand these? This is what happened to Jezebel and all of her eunuchs. I've seen it happen time and time again. It happened 25 years ago. But it states, we know that God does not listen to sinners. He listens to the godly person who does his will. Not Jezebel's, but his will. Which brings us to Proverbs 15, 24 through 26. We're doing great today. This is what it says. And this is talking about the new move of God. The way of life is above in the cosmos to the wise. The way of life is above to the wise. It's in the cosmos. It's a new move. That he may depart from hell, the earth beneath. That he might, might depart from hell beneath. And the Lord will destroy the house of the proud, but he will establish the border of the widow. The thoughts of the wicked are an abomination to the Lord, but the words of the pure are pleasant words. How do you think you get pure? Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see the Lord. <clears throat> you either have it through the gift of love or you get purified. You get purified through deliverance working power on the inside. I don't redeem myself. I didn't save myself. Jesus Christ did. And that's when I decided I wanted to come out of hell. And see, there's so many people in the church right now that are living, walking, speaking pieces of hell because of Jezebel or the demons in their bloodline. Pardon me. And, and so it's the way the, the devil uses these vessels to show that they are king. That's the enemy's way to have a speaking voice. He wants a vessel to flow through. And I refuse to give him that power. I won't say anything unless it's him, the Lord Jesus Christ. He is the only spirit that will use me. Nobody else is allowed to use me but him. I hope that's you. Anyway, go have yourself a great day. I love you. And uh, we'll be talking soon. Let me see if I can get this up. But I'm going to play, play my outro for you. Anyway, love you. And if I don't see you before Friday, maybe we'll talk next Tuesday. <laughs> Have a blessed day. Bye.